I tell you, I wish I could sing for your preaching one time. <laughs> he reaches down with those hands of love, those nail scarred hands, and lifts us up from the deepest depths and brings us to the solid rock. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. A loving God that we serve. Tonight we're going to look at a message that I believe that's really going to be special to you because God is special to us. We are going to look at this message in this series through the eyes of John called the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. And those of you who are at home, I pray that you have your Bible near that you too might be able to follow along with us and receive the full blessing that we have by the Spirit of the living God. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, again, we are so thankful that you have allowed us to come together again to open thy word and to be able to worship unmolested. We ask that your Holy Spirit would not only fill this sanctuary, but fill the very presence, the space, the air, with those individuals who are at home, those who are watching online and wherever they may be, that your sweet, sweet spirit might draw them closer and closer to you. And that as a result of this meeting tonight, dear Lord, we will understand your role as the very Lamb of God in a more personal way is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We go directly to our first book of Revelation, chapter one, and this is just a mini review, chapter one, verse one. It says this book is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And ladies and gentlemen, we established last night without a shadow of a doubt that the book of Revelation is not a sealed book. It's not closed. It's not mysterious. It is something for us to study, to cherish, to embrace, and most of all, to follow. We saw in verse 3 of this same book, Revelation 1, it says, Blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and those that keep those things which are written therein. In other words, there's a triple blessing for us just studying it, reading, reading it, listening to it, and then doing the things of the book. So when we come together tonight and we look at this sweet book of Revelation and we established last night that the key of understanding Revelation is to understand that the Bible is its own expositor. In other words, it explains itself. And we saw last night, our opening night, that the book of Revelation has 505 direct or indirect quotations from 39 of the other books of the Bible. We see that all the books of the Bible end and meet there. So when we look at it, it is something, and, and please don't hold this against me, but if I had to just take one last book of the Bible to keep with me, in these very last days, I take the book of Revelation. Because in it, all the books of the Bible end and meet. I come to this book of Revelation and I see something, and we noticed this last night. We said that all of the Bible, the whole Bible, we have a sure word of prophecy. We saw that with the spirit of the living God, holy men were moved by the Holy Ghost and presented this book to us by the inspiration of God. We saw in 2 Timothy 3, 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, that it told us that all scripture, all scripture, not some, but all scripture is given by God and it is profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof. It's profitable for correction. It's profitable for instruction that the man, woman, boy, or girl may be able to be thoroughly furnished into all good works and to be perfect in the sight of God. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what really counts, to be perfect in the sight of God. Yeah. Not in our own estimates, in, not in our own estimate of what and who we are, but knowing that heaven is smiling at us and we have heaven's approval in all that we do and say. But when we come to the book of Revelation again, we see something new, something greater, something more experiencing that when we look at it and understand it and read it, it lets us know how dear this book is to us. Amen. It was not so much as holy men of God spake 
and moved upon John, it was not so much that it was dictated through the power of the Holy Spirit, but when we look through the book of Revelation and we see these words over and over again, I, John, saw, I, John, saw, I, John, behold, what does it mean? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it tells me in Revelation chapter 1, beginning with verse 9, it tells us that John, I, John, verse 1, verse 9 of chapter 1, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in that isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And you all know the story. We talked about it the other day. John was placed on the island of Patmos because they couldn't do anything else with him. They tried to kill him, but they couldn't kill him. He was the last surviving of the disciples. Everyone else met a martyr's death. Even Paul had his head taken from him, but they could not take his relationship with God. They took Mark and tore him between two horses and pulled him apart. And we look at Peter and all the rest. They went through martyr's death and they tried to kill John. They tried to do something different, something new. They didn't want to crucify him. They wanted to do something that would cause the people to be filled with fear for standing up for God. They took a quadrant of oil and they put it there and they heated it up and it was boiling. And they took John and put him in that hot boiling oil and friends when you with Jesus all that turned out to be for John was a hot mineral bath <laughs> because my Bible tells me that John was able to put together this book of Revelation because he survived what man could do for you. Folks, don't you know that if you're walking with God, the devil can't do you anything? Don't you know that if you're walking with God, he can bless you and there's no curse that man or devil can put upon you? Don't you know that if you're walking with God, there is nothing that God will not do for you until your work and ministry is done? He has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us, never to let the enemy overwhelm us. He has promised not even to let temptation come upon you that we are not able to bear. That's the kind of God we serve. And John, in his mercy, in his relationship with Jesus Christ, he is there now. But folks, you know what? I, I believe if you just allow me to just insert my own feelings, I, I, I can imagine that it was worse than death putting John on that island all by himself. A preacher with nobody to preach to. Have mercy. That means the satellite went out. Come on now. He had no crowd. There was nobody there to share the good news. You see, when you have a relationship with Jesus and what he has done for you, ladies and gentlemen, and you don't have to be a preacher on somebody's payroll or any conference, when you have a love of Jesus Christ in you, it's going to come out of you. You have to tell somebody about how good your God is and how he cares and what he has done for you and how he has forgiven you and how he has helped you. Your relationship with him is so great that you talk to him not only about the Christ is time periods in your life but even the little things there are times when I'm in LA and I can't find a parking spot and I say Lord Jesus can you just help can you help your servant find a parking spot so I don't have to walk so far I do need the exercise but but that's not the point I'm talking about on a time schedule and God allows the parking spot to just be there you see, prayer is talking with God as friend with friend, a relationship that you have with him. You can talk about him. You can talk to him about anything and everything. It's a sweet relationship. And when somebody else gets near you, the first thing you want to do is be able to find a way that you can tell them, right, Pastor? You can tell them about the goodness of God. We walk and walk and down these streets of, of, of this planet Earth and you see so many people who are heartbroken and so many people who are hurting and, and so many people who are stressed out. You see it on their faces. You see people who are bewildered as they watch the news night after night after night and they see all the things happening to planet Earth and, and, and they're looking for an answer. And ladies and gentlemen, we have the answer. That answer is Jesus Christ the Lord and he's coming again and we have to engage 
engage them and let them see that the reality, the reality that will last for eternity is a reality that is based in Christ Jesus. Amen. So here we have this preacher. He's all by himself. His compadres have all been slain. They put him in a place where he couldn't preach to anyone. And many of us, we might have been despondent and discouraged and said we just give up. But it tells me, ladies and gentlemen, it tells me on verse 10, and this thing gives me so much joy. It says in verse 10 of chapter 1, he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. In other words, even though he was by himself, there was no one looking at him. There were no members to impress. There was no one to preach to. The Sabbath school director was not there to see if he was on time or not. John was by himself on the Lord's day and he had church by himself. I can see him getting up very early in the morning for early morning prayer meeting. I see himself move over now to Sabbath school study time as he's studying the parchments that he has the things and recollecting the things that he experienced in his relationship with Christ. And then when divine hour comes up and he's about to really get into a meditative thought about his Lord, Jesus shows up. You see, where there are two or three gathered together in his name, he's going to show up. But guess what? Don't feel bad if you're by yourself. Jesus is not going to let you stay by yourself. He's going to be with you and he is there in you. And he is there drawing you to him with cords of love. That's the kind of Savior we serve. That's the kind of Savior that loves us. And when we look at this portion of the scripture, get my point. What I'm saying is Jesus showed up to not only inspire John, but to give him a visual of what's going to happen in the last days. The record says here, look at it please, in chapter 1, verse 10, and I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and to Pergamos, and to Thyatira, and to Sardius, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake unto me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about with paps with a golden girdle his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as the flame of fire and his feet were like unto fine brass as it they burned in a furnace and his voice was the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him I fell down at his feet as dead and laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, for I am the first and the last. Can you imagine? Here you are all by yourself, thinking you're by yourself, but John didn't think it. He knew that there are more with him than against him, even though the invisible shield was there. By faith, he could see unto heaven. He understood his relationship with his God, and even if he was by himself, he had enough sense to count down on the calendar and keep God Sabbath by himself with his God. Amen. Oh, my friends, the Lord showed up and gave him instant spiritual cable vision to show him the things which must shortly come to pass. And when we look at this, ladies and gentlemen, he gave John a revelation of himself and he gave us, ladies and gentlemen, the guidelines that we need to make it through to the finish line in the last days of Earth's history. The record says he identified himself. God didn't send Gabriel, even though Gabriel would have come. He went to Daniel. He could have sent some other angel. He could have wrote it in the sand. He could have just filled his head with a night vision. But Jesus himself came. The record says in verse 18, he said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the